how much does your new coworker make? That might sound like juicy gossip, but in New York, that's now common knowledge. Hi there, everyone. I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English, where JR and I help you upgrade your English with current events and trending topics. By listening here, you'll expand your vocabulary, improve your listening, and maybe even enjoy the topics. I said maybe. If you work in New York City, here's something trending. Salaries are now public, at least for job postings. It's part of a movement called pay transparency. On today's lesson, we'll talk about what it means for job seekers. Those are the people looking for a job and what it means for employers. In the second half of the lesson, I'll show you how to use the English phrase push the envelope and we have a quote of the week. Let's dive in. Salary negotiations are miserable. This is a commonly held opinion among job seekers everywhere. The employer seems to have all the information and all the power, leaving the job candidate feeling powerless. The employer knows how much they pay all their other workers, and the employer probably has access to confidential or private industry reports with a lot more information. The employer might have five, 10, or 20 other applicants. They know what the alternatives are. The job seeker, on the other hand, knows what he or she makes, but that's about it. This Information imbalance leaves job seekers at a disadvantage. But some job seekers are better at negotiating than others. And many studies suggest that women are especially bad at negotiating their salaries. Men, speaking in general, are more willing to push the envelope and ask for a higher wage. And since they're more willing to ask, they're more willing to get it. This is one potential reason why women and minorities tend to make less money for the same work. But this information imbalance is starting to change. On November 1st, New York City implemented a long-awaited law. It's called the Salary Transparency Law, and it requires employers to disclose a salary range for all jobs that they advertise on their websites, on job boards, and even on printed flyers that they might hand out. The law requires the employers to state the minimum and the maximum that they would pay a qualified candidate. The law says that employers must make the estimates in good faith, meaning that they must post a range that they honestly believe they would pay the successful candidate. This rule applies to base pay only, whether that's an annual salary or an hourly wage. Employers are not required to disclose things like health insurance, vacation, pension contributions, bonuses, or other benefits. Authors of the law hope that pay transparency will help reduce the disadvantage for women and minorities. If there's a minimum and a maximum, then the range for negotiation is already established before the specific salary negotiations start. For example, let's say that a job requires five to 10 years of experience and the pay range is 100,000 
to $130,000 per year. A candidate with eight years of very direct, relevant experience can negotiate toward the higher end of the range. Someone with only five years of experience can expect something toward the lower end of the range. But at least both sides know what the range is, whereas before, the employer had all the information. Pay is one of the most important factors that job seekers consider when looking for a new position. So transparency on pay will likely help them more easily identify jobs that would fit their requirements. And a lot of people who casually browse listings might be more motivated to apply if they knew more about the potential compensation. Employers, too, might find something to like in this arrangement. At first glance, it seems like they're losing a little bit of negotiating leverage, and they are in the short run. But employers might find that this saves them time. For example, if they go all the way through the interview process, make an offer, and only then discover that the candidate has high salary requirements, well, they've wasted a lot of time on someone who was never going to accept their offer. Think of this, too. Imagine an employer successfully negotiates a low starting salary for a qualified female or minority candidate. Congratulations. The employer just saved, say, $5,000 per year. But now imagine that that candidate starts work and three months in, she finds out that she's being paid less than her peers. Well, now she might be disgruntled, resentful, and more likely to quit. So was that small savings in salary worth it to the company? Maybe not if it leads to higher turnover. So if the employer discloses the pay range ahead of time, then every new employee knows that they're in the range. They won't find out later that they're being paid less than the market rate. And this can increase trust and job satisfaction. New York is not the only place where this is happening. The state of Colorado implemented a similar law in 2021. Washington state, which includes Seattle, will have pay transparency in January. California will soon follow. A similar bill is being considered at the state level in New York, which would apply to jobs outside of New York City. There are some potential pitfalls. First, everyone will want to be at the high end of the range. If the range is 100 to 130, who is going to accept 101 and be happy? So everyone wants to be at the high end of the range. Employers might purposely publish narrower ranges with lower ceilings for new jobs. They can then get around the rules by giving big raises after a few months. Remember, this new law only applies to job listings. It doesn't apply to existing employees. Second, pay transparency doesn't affect fringe benefits or one-time bonuses. So the good negotiators might be able to exploit this loophole. The good negotiators might say, fine, give me the $130,000 top of the range salary, but I also want a guaranteed bonus of $25,000. A bad negotiator 
might not think to ask for the guaranteed bonus. So the gap in compensation might remain even if the gap in base pay is narrower. I used to work at a very, very big accounting and consulting firm. And over the years, they started to become more transparent about what you could expect to earn at different stages of your career. Now, pay was different by city, by division, by many factors. But in recent years, it was possible to have a general understanding of what you could expect to make as you got more and more senior. And I think as the firm opened up a little bit about these ranges, people's anxiety about pay started to fall a little. Fewer people were afraid that they were being cheated. And by knowing what they could make as they continued to get promoted, people had something to look forward to. So in general, the secrecy over pay probably didn't work for either side. The law might do some good, but I think legislators are kidding themselves if they think they can erase pay discrepancies just by passing this law. The good negotiators will still find a way around this. So my best advice for job seekers is to prove your value, know your worth, ask for what you want, and then ask for a little more. Today's expression is to push the envelope. To push the envelope means to get close to the edge of the acceptable behavior in a given situation or maybe even cross the line. So, you know, in every situation, there's a range of acceptable behavior. People who push the envelope like to get right up to the edge of the acceptable behavior and maybe even violate the norms of a situation. We talked two weeks ago about taking liberties, and I said at the time, a wedding speech is a great time to take liberties with the truth. It's a time to say good, positive things, and only good and positive things. When you're giving a speech at a wedding, there's a range of acceptable behavior, right? The safest thing is to just say all good, nice, happy things. Also, in the range of acceptable behavior, you can tell a couple of jokes. You might be able to do some gentle ribbing. That means to make some light, good-natured fun of the couple getting married. It's a wedding, it's a celebration, so in the universe of acceptable behavior, it would be okay if you had had, say, a couple of drinks before the speech. All right, we all know people who like to push the envelope, and my advice to you is this, don't let those people near the microphone at your wedding, okay? What would it be like to push the envelope at a wedding speech? Hmm. Telling a story that might embarrass one member of the couple, that's pushing the envelope. Using some vocabulary that maybe the bride or groom would not want their grandparents or their young nieces and nephews to hear, again, pushing the envelope to use those words. Having more than just a couple of drinks before taking the stage, pushing the envelope. 
Now, these are not grave violations of rules, but they're getting right up to the edge of acceptable behavior, maybe crossing over into the world of unacceptable behavior. This is what it means to push the envelope. Any teachers out there? I know there are. If so, you know that in a group of kids, there are always a few who like to push the envelope. Imagine your school has a dress code and the boys have to wear blue pants. And most people wear dark blue pants that look good. But one boy decides to wear bright electric blue pants. That's pushing the envelope. Okay, fine, it's blue, but that's not the spirit of the rule. That's getting right up to the edge of acceptable behavior. Imagine there's a rule that you can't have candy in class, but one girl decides to bring cough drops every day, pushing the envelope. A cough drop is medicine, kind of. It might not technically be candy, but it's a close substitute. A boy asks to be excused so he can go to the restroom, and he comes back 12 minutes later, pushing the envelope. Who's to say, well, whatever. 12 minutes, it's pushing the envelope. It's getting right up to the edge of acceptable behavior, testing the limits, seeing what they can get away with. That's pushing the envelope. So New York's new pay transparency law requires employers to publish a range of salaries for every position. And I asked you to imagine a job posting with a published range of $100,000 to $130,000 per year. So most people will look at that and say, okay, the range is 100 to 130, so I'll try to position myself at the best possible place in that range. But then I said, and this is true, based on over 15 years in business, and over 40 years of experience in life in general, I said that some people are going to try to push the envelope. They are. Some people are going to look at that range and say, okay, the highest end of the range is 130. So let's start there. And then I want you to give me a guaranteed bonus of $25,000. Is that illegal for the job seeker to say that? No. Is that amoral? Also, no. No. But that is pushing the envelope. The range is supposed to be the range. A guaranteed bonus is a higher salary by another name. So a job seeker asking for the top of the range and a guaranteed bonus is really asking the employer to extend the range higher than what is published and that is pushing the envelope. And now I hope you can see why I don't think pay transparency laws will close the pay gap between men and women. Maybe it will help I don't know, but it is not going to magically solve the problem. A large part of the pay gap is because men ask for more than women ask for. You know, I don't like to make sweeping generalizations, but this one is fair. Boys, and as they grow up into men, are more likely to push the envelope than girls are, and that applies to the workforce. You know deep down that this is true. And so I do believe 
that in New York, some people are going to try to push the envelope and get around the pay transparency laws. There will be men, and yes, there will be women in that group that tries to get around the pay transparency laws. But I have a strong feeling that the people who push the envelope and get higher pay will skew mail. Here's a quick quote of the week since we're already going a bit long today. It's by George Bernard Shaw, a playwright. He said, Beware of false knowledge. It is more dangerous than ignorance. Boy, is that correct. It's more dangerous to be wrong about something than to not know about it in the first place. Beware of false knowledge. It is more dangerous than ignorance, says George Bernard Shaw. Well, we're going to have to do a live call about pay transparency, I think. This lesson comes out on December 5th, so one of our live conversation calls for PLUS members will be about pay transparency. And I think it would be fun to look at some job listings in New York and guess the pay range. We'll do a little compare and contrast with job listings in New York. We'll see who makes a lot, who makes a little, and whether we think the published ranges are fair. That'll be fun. So if you're a PLUS member, keep an eye on your dashboard for that. Now, if you're not yet a PLUS member, you're missing out. This is a great opportunity to get on a Zoom call with me, with JR, and with fellow Plain English listeners and practice talking about some of your favorite Plain English topics. So if you're not yet a PLUS member, go to plainenglish.com slash plus, P-L-U-S. It takes just a couple of minutes to sign up and you'll immediately be taken to a new homepage on plainenglish.com. And that homepage will include the schedule of upcoming calls. So check it out at plainenglish.com slash plus. We'll be back on Thursday with a new lesson. See you then.